If you've been doing polymer clay for any amount of time, you may have amassed a collection of molds. Molds are great because we can quickly and easily replicate a design over and over again, but did you know not all molds are created equal? In today's video, I'm going to show you two simple ways to get more use out of your polymer clay molds. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at keepsakecrafts.net. So here are just a few of my collection of molds that I use for polymer clay. But I discovered not very long ago that they are not all bakeable, which means some of these, like this Sculpey bezel mold, you can put your polymer clay in here, mold it, shape it to fit the mold, and bake it right in there, and that way you don't risk distorting your shape. That's fantastic. But not all of these are like this. In fact, all of these right here are not bakeable, I am pretty sure. And I found that out, sadly, because I had this mold. In fact, I used that mold to make this kind of crazy bowl. Isn't that fun? But then I was using it for something else not too long ago. And if you want to learn how to make this, I do have a video in my Etsy shop I'll link to how to make um, bowls using any kinds of molds you have. Sometime after I made this bowl and the video that shows you how to do this, I used it for something else and put it in the oven and when I went to get it, it was a melted mess. So sad. But what if I wanted to bake in one of these molds? First of all, what you want to do is see if you can find information on the mold. Like this one has some words and you might be able to look it up and find out if it is bakeable. But if you're not sure or you can't find the information on your particular mold, I have for you a workaround. So in order to do this workaround, the first thing you need to do is make a mold of the impressions that you want in polymer clay. To get good impressions with all the details, roll your clay into a teardrop so that you can press it into those really deep areas like the muzzle of the dog or this deep part on the fire hydrant or the kitty cat's nose. It's often noses on faces that will be especially deep. And really press nice and firm with your clay. Make sure your clay is well conditioned. You can also roll over this with an acrylic roller. And just really, I'm kind of pressing from the front and the back. Really make sure that clay is down there so that you capture all that detail because that's what you bought the mold for, right? Once you have your clay all in there, use a clay blade to trim your shape flush with the back of the mold. And I've found the best way to do this is to come at it from several different angles. These molds are a little annoying because they're kind of soft and flexible. So it, it's nicer if it's more like this and it's very solid all the way through. You can really go through and get the whole thing. But in just a little bit of perseverance, you'll be able to do this. Of course, you clean it up a little bit better than I did here. But then you'll want to pop your piece out and bake it. Now, if it's a delicate piece or if it's just you're afraid you're going to distort it when you pop it out, you can put it in the freezer for a while. Polymer clay will not get rock hard. It will not freeze solid like ice, but it will get more firm, so you should be able to get it out of the mold without any distortion if you're careful. But if you just kind of bend it back, maybe from a few different directions, that will often help. There we go. And you can use scrap clay for this. Clean up your edges and then go ahead and bake this. And now you can make a bakeable mold out of this piece. So here, this is two-part molding putty. And if you want to know more about silicone molding putty, I've done a YouTube video on that. I will link to it. I'm just testing with one part right now to make sure this is enough. I want it to be fairly thick so that you really have something to press into. And you want to do this on a tile. So I actually might want a little bit more to make this mold. And I won't go into all the details about silicone molding putty, but just to show you. So now I know this is enough. So now I'm going to break that in half because what I need is one part of the white and one part of the purple. And you can eyeball them, you can weigh them if you want, but usually eyeballing seems to be sufficient 
to have two balls that are about the same size. And then you mix them together. I'm not going to do that today. I've done that in that other video. But let's pretend that this ball of silicone molding putty is all mixed. And here is my piece that I want to replicate. You place it on a tile. This gives you because this tile surface will end up being the back of your mold, like on this one. And then you press that firmly from the center out and to get a good impression. You allow it to cure, and once it's cured, now you have a mold that you can bake in. So that's how you can take a non-bakeable mold and turn it into a mold that you can bake in. If you take care in both of the molding steps, in putting your clay into the mold and in creating your silicone mold, you should have little to no loss of detail. And by the way, I have searched online for a replacement for the mold I melted, but it's not in stock anywhere. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. I found someone in Australia who has three for sale. They're $11.95, not bad. Except shipping to the USA would be $30. Yikes. So if any of you has this mold, the Art Doll Faces, and would be willing to mold and bake the two largest faces, because those are the ones I don't have, uh, I would be most grateful. Let me know in the comments and we can work something out. Many thanks to those of you who have decided to support me on Patreon. It makes a big difference and is a huge factor in whether or not this channel stays on YouTube. And if you like my videos, don't forget that patrons have the opportunity to get up to two bonus tutorials every month. For the second way that you can make the most of your molds, there's come on the market recently some molds that are nice and wonderful and detailed, but they are a little bit difficult to work with. These are all molds from Create Along. You get wonderful details like these snowflakes and this little lizard, fish, this wonderful border. But the problem with these is that they're, they're very squidgy. Can you see that? They're so squishy, they're actually really hard to work with. I don't know if you noticed something about all of these pieces that I made in these molds. I actually made them with liquid clay. Now this one is a little bit trickier because you need to be sure to get out all the air bubbles in order to get a nice impression. But what you can do is place your mold on a tile, because they're so floppy and squishy, place it on a tile and then fill it with liquid clay. Now a lot of these have very deep impressions and undercuts. So what I recommend doing is really doing a small amount of liquid clay at a time and then use a tool to really work out all of the air bubbles. So we'll fill these in and let them sit for a while, even overnight, it won't hurt anything. Let it sit, let all those air bubbles work their way out so that you have a nice complete impression and then bake. When you do that, you'll have something like this, which then you can use the silicone molding putty to make a mold of, and then you'll have a better mold. The, the silicone molding putty, as long as you use enough of it, you'll have a firmer mold that you can really press polymer clay into more comfortably than you can in these. And here's a bonus tip, by the way. This is a great way to extend the use of your molds for using with food. You don't want to use these molds that you use with polymer clay with food, but you can make a silicone copy and use it to mold chocolate or fondant or whatever you want. If you have other ways uh, that you have thought of of extending the use of your polymer clay molds, I would love to hear them. Please share in the